Hello guys, my name is Russian Badger, and I don't even know what to start with. Like, I literally need to have a gab fest with you right now, but I have no idea what to start with. Like, you know, pistols, primaries, medics, grand bazaar, attacking, defending. But, okay, one, two, and then look, I get Doritos twice, and it's like he just morphed from nacho cheese over to Cool Ranch. It's like the fact that he got revived. That's sort of annoying. I think that's something that happened to me and just having him. Do you see that? I thought he was clearly around the corner, like I was shooting bullets at a ghost, but I still killed him somehow. And yes, this guy just absolutely rolled. I got smashed, alright? I got smashed with the M60, and in my own defense, I don't know if this completely justifies it, but that catfish kills much faster than I do with the M60, but at the same time, I think it's my own ignorance. Like. With the RPK-70, or excuse me, I always call it the RPK-74M because I use both these weapons so frequently. It's the AK, alright? The AK-74M. Yeah, you like... It's 650 rounds per minute, and a lot of people assume, oh, it, it, yet again, just rolled. I, I'm getting trashed by this guy. And this, this entire game starts out very rough, and I'm not going to tell you how it ends because I hate spoilers, but... I think there's this notion in a lot of people's minds right now that, oh, it's an assault rifle, automatically kills faster than an LMG, right bro? No, no, that's not the way it works. Like, bro cookie, there are so many LMGs that kill faster than an assault rifle, it's not even funny. But, there's some serious badger accuracy right there, and yet again with the M60, I die again. And, it kills faster, and I know this this sounds weird to hear, but it kills faster than the AK-74M. Uh, like, what? I... I had the same reaction. What? That is no. That doesn't make any sense. Not logical. There's no reasonable line of thought there. No. No. Uh, no. Not the way it works. And yet again, like this, th the beginning of this match is so rough. But the M60 actually kills faster than the AK-74M. I know it sounds weird, but 34 damage at 500. I believe it's 580, if I'm not mistaken. But I know for a fact, I know for a fact that the M60 definitely kills faster. Like, I've seen the chart of which weapons kill faster, you know, in terms of milliseconds and so forth. The M60 literally kills faster than the AK-74M at any range. Any single range. Including close range. And that's because it only takes three bullets, bro. Three bullets, that's it. And I know that sort of goes against your conventional reasoning, and that's after the patch. You know, before the patch, it took four shots, and that's what it, sort of what I discussed in the LMG got about that fourth bullet syndrome, you know, with the, uh, the M60 and the M240B, I believe. But after the patch, you know, it's only three bullets. That thing is so deadly at so many different ranges, and I think people still have that precedent in their mind of LMG must suck at close range, and then that's, that's not even... That's not even close to being true anymore. Not even close. And I get Nacho Cheese Doritos yet again. That guy... I got him so many times. Okay, I get that guy and this other catfish that was just... It was so weird. It was so weird because he was absolutely, like, straight up terrifying in any kind of vehicle. But when he was not in a vehicle, he was like... Carl, do you even know how to play first-person shooters? Like, do you know what W-A-S-D-R? Like, um... Yes. Uh, like, I, I just didn't get it. I didn't get it. This guy was, like, so bad. I don't know, I don't know why I keep getting Cool Ranch Dorito over and over again, but I guess he's the only one that's poking his head out. And the AK-74M, it's, it's so powerful. I think a lot of people underestimate it. Like, I'm sort of getting jumbled yet again, but this guy, I believe his name, okay, it's something like 2126. I'll, 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 I'll be reminded once I kill him again, because I kill him several times. Like, he is... He is always that chatty Cathy that is always like the head of the gab fest on some corner in some lurk spot, but it, it was just weird, man, because he, I think the round before, he went something, it was something insane, like 41-1 and one on Zen Crossing with the lav, but then when he got here, he just got trashed, like he got rolled so hard, but it's still sort of peculiar how people can just be that bad on the ground, but very, very good with vehicles, but I also wanted to mention that the... And that was such, that is such a, did you see that? That's, oh, that's the guy right there. Okay, Hoover 2126, that guy was, he is baller in a tank, all right? He's baller. But when it comes to the ground, he is like, I, he doesn't know left from right. He does not know what he's doing. That's, <clears throat> it's not exactly the opposite of me, because I know my way around a tank a little bit. But the RP, I always call it the RPK 74M. I called it like, like two minutes ago, but. The AK-74M is a definite favorite of mine. I'm probably going to say it's my favorite assault rifle, but that range, man. That range with a heavy barrel and no grip, that is... Oh, my 
gosh, that's so good at range. And th that's sort of the weapons that I use nowadays, and those were just random nades. And I somehow got a hit marker with one, I have no idea how. And I don't know what that guy was doing, he just came up and... I must go, my people need me. I don't know why he just left, but I was like, you know what, he probably made a mistake, accidentally jumped, you know, spamming the jump button, he accidentally jumped over the ledge, and... Come out of you. Good morning, Carl. Feel, feel free. He, Dorito, man. Dorito. He was the only guy that I just didn't understand his behavior other than who were 2126. Like, did you see that? He was running up the stairs, and then he just nope. He just noped so hard as soon as he saw me. I want to run away now. Uh, it's not going to work. You can't just run away mid-stair. Uh, Carl number one and Carl number two, feel free to join the party. And there's Hoover 2126 yet again. And Party X Zebra. I did not understand that fellow either. He was very... Very peculiar along with Hoover, and I'm very, very happy that guy didn't, did not get in my way, because that is one of my largest pet peeves when it comes to Battlefield. Like, you just get, you just slaughter a bunch of enemies, and yes, Dorito, Dorito is finally picking up on my tactics. Badger, don't lurk! Don't lurk, Badger! And I, sh I should almost just change my name. I, you guys know that I got my name back, and it's sort of... It's sort of served its purpose, if you ask me. Like, now you guys don't know if you see the Russian Badger on your, on PC playing around on some random server. Is it really him, or is it one of his friends? And I I shouldn't have killed that guy. He kills faster than I do with the F2000. But this reminds me of a story, all right? This is like story time with Badger. Okay, he gets revived. And I really want to ask you guys. It reminded me of this story. Just him getting revived reminded me, reminded me of this story. Okay. Are you a, a an inconsiderate revive E or victim? Or are you a glad one? Like, Jack T. Great is the biggest Carl, but he has a special place in my heart. Alright, he says, revive me, I will give Cookie. So I revived him, and he says, here is Cookie. Look at look at how nice that guy is. Like, that guy is the manifestation of Carl, but look how nice... He gave me a cookie when I revived him, but then, about five minutes later, I died a little inside. Okay, look, he gets blown sky high by the helicopter. Come here, Carl, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Rosin on Carl! What? What? No! No! I couldn't revive him. He, he t It's like the Bruce Willis syndrome. He died too hard. You can't die that hard and expect to get revived. I, I was so sad. Like, literally, a small piece of me died yesterday when that happened. He was giving out cookies, and he would type that in. Like, when people would revive him, he would type that in. Here is Cookie with a little emoticon and everything else. <laughs> and I, I just couldn't revive him. Just... This is what I have to say about that. Number one, I died a little inside because that happened, and he will always always have a special place in my battlefield heart. But another quick sort of moral that you can draw away from that story, Dice never fixes anything totally. Like, okay, for example, right there, yeah, they made the reviving a little bit better, and I get Carl and Roy There's Hoover yet again. He was always running around in a gap fist. He's always like the... That chatty Cathy dude. Ross and Jim, bro! But something that we can all learn from that sort of instance there is that DICE never really fixes anything fully. Like, yes, they made the reviving a little bit better, and this range is so great. Nacho Cheese Doritos yet again! Okay, but uh, DICE never really fixes anything totally. Like, they made the reviving a little bit better, but they didn't completely fix it. Read like a book, that guy. And another instance is, okay, if you look at the intro clip, look at the intro clip one more time. You know, I shot the helicopter, clearly with a tank shell. Clearly with a tank shell, but it didn't blow up. If you want to... I don't know if you want to watch the intro clip again, but I clearly hit that helicopter with the tank shell before the RPG. You know, I, I was forced to use the RPG because the tank shell didn't blow up, but if you look at the intro clip, I clear- Rise and shot, bro! Rise and shot, bro, cookie! And, like, you can obviously tell that I clearly hit that helicopter with a tank shell long before I hit it with the RPG and it didn't explode. So, Yes, DICE make, makes things better with patches, but they never completely fix anything. That, at least that's my opinion on a lot of what uh, is wrong with the game. But then again, like, I think a lot of you also know, yet again, Hoover is always running around, and I also got revenge on that, uh, the 12 kilometer guy, or kilometer, I'm sure one of you Europeans are going to get really sad on me, but... Yeah, kilometer, kilometer, you didn't even say clicks, it really doesn't matter, but it's, I felt so good when I revenged that guy. And look at this tactic right here, okay, I got these two guys right here, and Hoover yet again, not a surprise. But look, when you when you sit on a med kit, that works so in incredibly well. Like, it, it's sort of hard to explain, and I think a lot of you will understand if I just sort of tell you the general idea of it, but sitting on a med kit literally wins you a lot of gunfights with 2-3% to 3 health. 
I'll describe it this way. While you're getting shot, while you're standing on a med kit, in that, those split seconds where that guy is shooting you and killing you, you're regaining like fractions of health, like 1 to 2 to 3% health while you're sitting on a med kit, while he's killing you. So if he's not standing on a med kit, and you are, you might be slower in the gunfight, you might be slower to react, and you sh you showing the long- Did that guy shined a laser in my face, I was like, you, you picked a wrong person to like flash that laser at, because that's, that's, not gonna, that's not gonna help you at all. But you can oftentimes survive with 2-3% to health, all because you're sitting on a med kit, and he is not. You're regaining a few health percentage points, and he's not, and that can oftentimes- you will live with 2-3% health, and that reminds me, okay? That reminds me of this story, alright? And it, it has to do with the, the frustration of two, two, like 0-2% to two health. You guys know how frustrating that can be, right? When you have like 2% health? Look, okay, come here, come here, you, okay? I got the first Carl who just sprints through the doorway, that's awful. But this guy was actually very smart, but he thought I was dead and I wasn't. He got so sad, look at this. And holy cheese boy, America! I, I guess he's, he's very right with that, but look, he got really sad. Look, zero HP? No. I guess he he was very, very upset that I only had two HP left, but probably because I was sitting on the health pack. And okay, I regain it here, and somebody please forward this to the dice developers, because this needs to be patched, alright? Just clearly this needs to be patched. Look, he claims that, look at this, alright, he claims that, yeah, if an RPG hits you in that section of the body, it should do more than 40 damage. I also agree with that. That should be... That should almost be like a segment of a future weapon guide. Like... The head... The, like the head is a 2.0 damage multiplier. The chest is a 1.0 damage multiplier. Leg shots doing 10% less than body shots. I, I sound like such a catfish when I do a weapon guide. I sound so professional. Oh, it's, it's goofy. I'm like a different person when I do a weapon guide, but... It'd be cool in a future weapon guide if it's like, if you hit him in a certain region of the pelvic area, it will do 180,000 damage. Like, that would... I don't know if there should be an RPG multiplier for that section of the pelvis, but I guess that's not really my decision. And you probably thought the game was going to end here. Obviously, we completely stomped them because... Because I know how to revive, and I think that's going to become an even more... I don't even want to say motif, because I don't think motifs exist in Battlefield videos, but it's almost like a theme that you're going to see in the next video. So I decided I'm not a filthy casual that uploads a 12-minute gameplay, because 12-minute gameplays are filthy casuals, if you ask me. So I decided to tack on a second gameplay where I attacked on Grand Bazaar, and this one is really goofy. Like, a lot of people get crushed. I pick up a weapon, and I do really well with it, despite the fact that I don't like it, and it is very, very goofy. But this is the end of the first game. Second game. Okay, this was great. Now look, okay, I, I don't think I get him the first time. No, do I get him the first time? Oh, I do! Get crushed, man! That guy got... <laughs> okay, I think he got crushed because he's a glass pheasant. I mean, I, I don't think you can argue with people getting crushed because they're made of glass, but especially pheasants, if you ask me. So I get... No, I don't crush anybody yet. It's like on and off, because it's, it's weird because sometimes, you, you know, I hit I hit the... There are certain sections of buildings in this in this specific map that don't break. Like, you're just wasting a 320. And I know it's kind of catfish to run the 320, but for the most part, and I can just not hit this guy to the doorway. That was so difficult, and... That guy was just sitting on pallets, and uh, no, I don't get a grenade kill with that. And there, there's a complete waste of a 320. You're not going to hit any, like that thing doesn't, that kind of building, or that section of the building is not even explode. I don't even know why I would try. And yet again, attempt number two, complete failure. So I got the wise idea. He's like, I almost feel like I'm from Brooklyn. He's like, wise guy, who's the wise guy? But okay, so I got the idea that if I could equip the 320, I could probably pop this guy right in his mouth if I could direct impact him, and good stuff will probably happen. So the first time, uh, well, okay, obviously I was getting more 320s from the ammo bro box there, but okay, first time, complete failure. The second time, check this out, bro. All right, all right, just brace yourself, just hone in on this. All right, popped in the face, Wesley snipes, and I clean it up the two piece and the biscuit for the three piece. Like, oh man. I know that doesn't make any sense, but you guys, I believe, okay, this is what I think. This is almost like ghost whispers, and I don't even know what just happened, but 
I believe what and crush yet again, man. Get dunked on so hard, but this is what I think would happen. I think I hit the guy, and then the grenade that was in his hand somehow dropped and was counted as my grenade. Because you guys obviously saw, I didn't throw a hand grenade. I didn't throw a Wesley Snipes. Like that was. I don't even know if I consider it, and yet I can. I, I killed a glass pheasant, probably because he's made of glass, but. I don't know what happened. I think there's some sort of glitch, and I think I saw this in one of Threddy's videos, or his, his huge montage. If you hit him, or if you hit him at a certain angle, if you hit his hands or something, while he's throwing a grenade, it's somehow counted as your grenade, and then it can kill people. And that's, I guess, what happened there. But that was very, very peculiar, if you ask me. Just very peculiar. And this is where we finally get through. Like, and it's so remarkable that we've been playing for that long, and we've only lost, like, 25 tickets, and that is the magic of revive horror like there's there's a whole new gateway that is opened up when you run enough medics and that's exactly like for example guys if you really want to carry a team that is just complete garbage like you've got team carl and they've got team mlg pro like we're so pro because we all run m16s and we're all awesome i would definitely say run medic and try to encourage as many people as you can to run medic or and i know as like, a few of you're gonna get really sad on me Badger, it's not called Medic, it's called the Assault Class. Go back to Call of Duty. Well, I call it what I want, and I I, I think it's just conditioning me from Bad Company 1. Like, it's called the Medic, whatever. Call it what you want, it's the guy that runs around with the paddles and the pancakes, alright? Okay, and I, and I made a huge mistake here. I, I, I don't know why, I felt the need to, like, shove them back in their spawn. But, like, for, for some reason, I tried to, like run out here and take out a bunch of people around the corner it was just a bad idea just plain and simple bad idea and like look i said basically oh i can totally ramble around the corner and destroy everybody right well i forgot how black your screen gets and how you can't see anything and how people get revived and i just get absolutely destroyed but the m1911 that i got killed with really brings me to the next the uh, next topic which is pistols and secondaries and i just gotta I think I just saw a comment on the PW guide saying, Meow, 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 Badger. Make a pistol guide, but don't say that the, the 44 and the, and the Glock are the best pistols, because they're not. The MP443, and I think the guy said the MP443, <clears throat> the MP443 and the M1911, and I was like, what? Uh, no, no, those are, those are not the best pistols. At least, okay. I think the first thing I have to explain to you is that I don't view pistols in the way that a lot of people view pistols. I think in terms of statistics, you could probably argue a lot of them are the best pistol. Like, you could probably argue the, the M93R is definitely very high, the Magnum, the G18s, uh, the MP443 probably very high, but I don't view a pistol as something that is really all that statistically relevant. I'm more... I am much more concerned with how they handle in terms of their characteristics. I'm much less concerned with stats when it comes to uh, pistols and much, much more concerned with, with sort of how they handle in their characteristics. What I mean by that is, <clears throat> I, th I think the first thing I should explain is that a pistol for me is not something that I use to essentially, like the main aim is not killing people. And that was a wonderful 320 there, Carl. Awesome. I somehow got a hit marker with something. I don't, I don't know what that was, but something that I would like to explain is that a pistol for me is not about killing people. It's more, and although one begets the other, like yes, keeping you alive is about killing people, but a pistol for me and my sidearm for me is all about staying alive. I think that the G18 is perfect for me, and I think the M93R could also be argued. But, for example, the Magnum is a, is a novelty, but it's not the best thing that you could be using. And that's because of the reload time. Like, yes, you absolutely destroy people. You know, I stuck that loving 44 beneath my head. It's really great until you have to reload, and then that's when you die. I tried to direct impact that guy right in the kisser, but it didn't work. And I, I obviously cleaned him up there. But the AK, very, very bad. The 971, very, very bad at range. But... The Glock, because the Glock kills so fast, it's really, 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 really simple to use. Like, you, accuracy almost doesn't matter, because you just point it at the guy, you spray, and you win the gunfight. Essentially, if it's pistol on pistol, I, I know very few engagements that I've ever lost pistol on pistol while using the G18. And it's the reload time. You output a ton of damage, you reload, it, it's so simple, it's so simple. It's so completely simple, and that's the difference, and I, I killed Barbaric Mustard here, and... 
he hits up the chat. I don't know if he knew me or not, but I picked up his M16 because I was obviously almost out of ammo, and oh, I'm not a fan of the M16. But I'm gonna I'm gonna complete my pistol point. All right. I think that the G18 is the perfect pistol for me because it keeps me alive longer than a Magnum would. Like, for example, I know a lot of people, and El Loco Monkey 2012 doesn't know how to hip fire correctly, but it's more so about keeping me alive and less of. I know a lot of people that treat their sidearm like, oh, if I were to run out of ammo, this is what I would want to be running around with. And I think I, I, I could easily say, if I run out of ammo, I'd probably want to run around with a Magnum. But that's not true for a lot of the time because. If I run out of ammo for my primary, I'm looking for another kit. I'm not looking to run around with a secondary. That's sort of idiotic to me. I don't think it's very smart to run around with a secondary. That's how you die very, very quickly. And I think it's more so about keeping yourself alive. And the one thing that keeps me alive, and the one pistol that buys me enough time, and that's spray and pray. I'm not even joking. That's double headshot. That's. I feel like there should be a Halo announcement for that. It's not even revenge. Like, revenge! I always think of, when I think of Halo announcers, I also think of... Oddball. That's always the first one that I think of. But more of the story, I, I just think the G18 keeps me alive longer than the others, and it buys me enough time to reload my primary. And that I think that's what the function of the pistol is. That I, as I get this gentleman over here, I think that's the function of the pistol. The pistol is not, in my opinion, used for aggression. It's used for it buys you time to reload your primary. That's what I think it's used for. That's why I think. The G18 is perfect for me. I think the G18 and the M93 are probably the best statistically, but like arguments for the M1911 and the MP443, yeah, they might be good on the stat sheet, but overall, like I think somebody with an automatic weapon has such an easier time killing you because accuracy is very, very, it's not as important because you have so many rounds and you're fully automatic. I don't think it's as important. Like, I just think the G18 and the M93R are really what you should be going for, but. That's just me. But, like, it's weird to say because the... It's it's very, very weird to say, and I got a two-piece here with Carl number one and Carl number two yet again, but it's weird to say because I think some people treat pistols as in, like I said, if I run into ammo, this is what I want to be running around with, like a Magnum. So they almost want a second primary. That's, what I, that's like, not at all what I want. I want something that just buys me time. That's really all that my Glock is. It's something that buys me time for when I have time to reload. That's that's really all that I needed to do. And you're gonna notice here, essentially these, these kids just got dumped because they couldn't get another spawn. Like you saw last time, or on that on that last little, uh, on the last base, or that, that base that we just, uh, the two MCOMs that we just blew up. All right, so you guys saw that I locked down the spawn because, okay, you remember the double headshot where I just sprayed into the smoke? They can come out there, and then they can come out right in this area right here in the street, and like, it works both ways, okay? This is what some people don't realize in Grand Bazaar. It works both ways. Just because you can completely shut out the attacking team while you're defending, and I don't know how I got a two-piece there. Two-piece, I, I, don't, I, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know. Um, I wanted to say that Grand Bazaar, a lot of people don't like Grand Bazaar. I don't know, man. Like, it started out where the defending team absolutely destroyed the attacking team any day of the week because of the choke points were so bad. Like, the hallways, corridors, alleyways, so difficult for the attacking team. But then, obviously, after the patch, they added the M1A1 Abrams, and I don't even know. Like, I, I can almost argue that the attacking team has it easier now because they can afford to run all those medics and run a revive train and have a tank. And the defending team doesn't have that luxury because obviously they need to run support or engineers and a lot of them to take down a tank, especially when these, when you have that much cover and a lot of, like in this cityscape atmosphere, when you have that much cover, it's really easy to get a lot of engineers behind a tank and repair it without getting killed. And so I think that's the inherent disadvantage of Grand Bazaar for the defending team. They are forced to run support, a lot of support and engineers just to take down the tank because it's very, very hard to take down if the attacking team knows how to repair correctly and that look at all these medics this is what is so like it's so unbalanced if you ask me if you if your entire team runs medics it's really really difficult to lose like you just have so much constant pressure and it doesn't come in waves like you guys know that on other maps a lot of other maps and this is more so like the, the whole medic train thing i think it's more so broken on the maps where it's city like where, where the attacking team has a vehicle and the defending team does not, like for example, Zen Crossing would be a perfect example of this as well. Grand Bazaar and Zen Crossing. They can have constant pressure. Like right now, we have constant pressure because we have unlimited revives. Like 
you know, you know, conventionally on a lot of maps, and obviously you can't pull a medic train on, like, Caspian Border, because you will get face-rolled, and you'll get dunked. You'll get raffle stomped so quickly, it'll make your head spin. But, on maps like this, because we have a vehicle and they don't, they have to run, you know, engineers and supports, we can have constant pressure, and that's the advantage of a medic train. You have constant pressure. On other maps, it comes in waves. You know, like, you, you, you sort of build up, you all make a push at once, and sometimes you get completely cut down, other times you don't, other times you get the objective. But that's not the way it is. It doesn't come in waves, like there's, there's like, stymied pressure. It's like, uh, like, pulsing pressure. With the medic train, it's like constant pressure that eventually overwhelms you, unless you're running a medic train yourself on the defending team. Because that's almost the only counter. The only counter to a medic train is essentially running a medic train yourself, and oftentimes you don't have enough guys on your team that are all on the same page to understand that, so... <clears throat> it's sort of something that... The whole medic train thing. It's sort of something that a lot of people don't realize until they play enough Battlefield and they realize how... Like, how easy it is to win with this tactic, and how... It's, like, I, I sort of originally picked up on it when... The team that was attacking us was clearly inferior. Like, their skill levels, their ability levels, and not like their levels as in, like, you know, how many how many eagles you have, 23, 24. That's really not usually an accurate indication of how good you are. But it shows that you have some experience at least. So that's like a general idea. But just because somebody's more experienced than somebody else does not mean that they are better than them. But you'll notice, and I think this is really where the light bulb went off for me, it was on Operation Metro, and I think I've, I've seen the same thing on Zen B or Grand Bazaar and Zen Crossing. The team that was attacking us was running a medic train, and they were clearly inferior. Like, the gains before that, on the, on the vehicle maps, they got destroyed by us. Like, their ability level, their skill level, they were, they were really, really worse. They were much lower in ranking. They were very, very bad. But on these city maps, we didn't run a medic train as a defending team. They ran a medic train, and they absolutely destroyed us with an inferior team with worse players. And that's where you sort of notice that the medic train is a definitely is, is definitely very, very strong to use if you want to carry a team. So, I don't know if I can explain it to you fully. It's almost something that you really have to experience for yourself, but... Hopefully you know what I'm saying generally about, you know, what I talked to, talked about today in terms of the primaries and the pistols and everything else and nacho cheese Doritos and everything else. So, I'll see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald. I have not even decided what your bonus clip is going to Actually, you know what? Why don't I give you... Okay, I'm going to give you two bonus clips. Bonus clip number one is going to be me shooting down a jet. And bonus clip number two is going to be exactly what I mean in terms of why a medic train is so incredibly hard to stop. I'm going to show you two clips that, with like, without the distraction of my voice, you'll see exactly what I mean in terms of how a medic train is extremely hard to stop. I, I almost feel like the only counter is more medic trains. Like, you, it's almost like you can only counter a medic train with another medic train, but I'm still sort of analyzing how to defeat it. It's sort of an interesting tactic that I've sort of seen, but... I'm going to show you a few clips of that. Actually, how about I just, I just slop a bunch of bonus clips on you? Okay, how about I give you two examples of a medic train to try to give you sort of a rough idea of what I'm speaking about, what I'm trying to sort of critically analyze here. And how about shooting down a jet and shooting down a helicopter? I will give you all of those things in a bonus clip. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later.